Hi, my name's Vero, and today I'm going to look at something that I've been planning for quite a long while, even before Frontiers was released, which is a video series on measuring and building in No Man's Sky. As you can see here, I'm standing on some measurements. And um, No Man's Sky has a slightly weird approach to how parts snap together, and we often say that it's illogical. But there is a certain amount of logic to it and exactly how long parts are in relation to each other, how high parts are in relation to each other, does have a certain amount of logic. And also, I was wanting to start with basic measurements and then go on to what I would call micro adjustments, which are when you use parts to move your building position very, very small amounts. Let me just show you what I'm standing on here. Let's go into camera view. So here we have the basic parts in No Man's Sky laid out so that we can see their relationship. And the most obvious one to start with is five floors and four large pavers. And you can see that I've set it up so that the three floors and four pavers line up perfectly. They have the same width, and I talked about this when I was talking about putting floors inside cuboid structures. A paver, these things here, yeah, they are the same size as cuboids. Now, if you look in the save files using a save editor for No Man's Sky, you can see that everything has a position. And when you snap things, you can see exactly how far they they shift. And it seems like there's a lot of floating point mathematics involved. It doesn't work out as a pure grid system, but everything can be pretty much pinned down as long as you only focus on say a thousandth of a unit, which brings us to what a unit is in No Man's Sky Save Editor. A paver, which I'm looking straight down on here. If we go into the build menu, we're talking about the raised small paving, which seems to have had a number of names over the years. And this part is interesting because it's exactly one unit high. And what we mean by that is if I was to snap one there and then place one on top of it, then in the coordinate system that the save editor uses, this one would be considered to be one unit lower than this one. So it'd be in the same X, Y coordinate, but a different Z coordinate, if it actually specified which were its coordinates, which it doesn't. So the height of this paver is exactly one unit high. What I've done here is I've laid them out horizontally rather than vertically, so that you can see that the height of a paver corresponds to or well, half of a small paver and a quarter of one of the larger pavers. So again, this paving, as it's now called, has four marks on it. Four squares along, one, two, three, four, and four up, one, two, three, four. And each of those squares is a single unit of measurement or one U in No Man's Sky. And this is why this corresponds. So the small paving is exactly two units wide. And indeed, the raised small paving is the same width, two units wide and one high. Now you'll note I was specifying earlier that it's about where they snap to rather than their actual dimensions. If we look at this raised paving and indeed the smaller paving and this larger paving. They each have a little rim around the outside, this golden rim here. And that isn't actually there when you snap a part to it. So if we were to snap a small paving, that rim kind of gets swallowed up in the gap between. There's a slight 
amount of it there, but hardly anything. And so when we're talking about measurements in this way, we're talking about what it would snap to. So this, this paver here would be two units away from this paver here. So the center is two units from that center. This edge is two units from this edge. This edge is four units from that edge. Now, while we're talking about moving, putting things sideways, I've positioned these six short walls sideways and six short walls and five pavers are the same height. And many people know this and use it because this is where the whole idea of using these two parts in combination comes from. So if we position a floor with a raised paver against it, and then position another one there. If I were to snap a floor here, it would be exactly one unit higher than the lower. So that gap between the two floors is one unit. But if we were then to snap a short wall between, you can see it's got two possible positions. It can go at the bottom or the top because it's shorter. And so we can now position a floor such that it's slightly higher. You can just about, if we position the camera correctly, see the gap between them. If they weren't wooden, then you wouldn't be able to see a gap between them because the wooden floors are thinner. And so the ratio between these two parts is five to six. Five pavers equals six short walls. while we're on short walls. Because there are four short walls in a normal wall, each yellow indicates the top of a normal wall. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight walls, or 32 short walls, is the same height as five floors. If we lay them out, horizontally rather than vertically, 32 walls equals five floors. So this four three ratio and this 32 five ratio, is actually quite handy for dividing up a square. Here we have a floor divided up into 32 equal measurements with short walls. And the way I did this was to start off by dividing using these red floors. And so I divided everything up into sixteenths. And the way to do that is to use the difference between the floor and the paving. Because the floor snaps to the paving and we can snap another floor on the other side of it we can start to get adjustments that are measured in sixteenths. And then once I filled out the entire row of the red ones, I then filled in the white ones by budging a floor one thirty second along and then just repeating the exact same process with that floor and then just slotting them in between. And the way I got the one thirty second in this particular case, there are different ways of doing that, was to utilize the difference between a floor and a short timber wall. And the difference between these two can be measured in 30 seconds. And so once you've got one of those measurements within this section, you can then fill out the rest of them using the 16th gradient. Another way to look at the relative sizes of parts is to consider everything in basis of the unit and the unit being this small raised paving height. So if we look at the raised paving again, as I said before, this is one unit high by two units by two units. 
and we can work out from these ratios what the relative sizes of everything else is. So for instance, a floor is five and one thirds units wide and long. So five and a third by five and a third. A small floor is half of this, which would be two and two thirds units. So a standard wall is three and one third high and five and a third wide. A short wall, or these, are exactly a quarter height. So they're the same width, same floor width of five and a third, and their height is 10 twelfths. 10 divided by 12. And then we get onto these tricky little light boxes. These in the save editor work out as 0.759 recurring width, which is 19 over 25. So 0.75999999 or as we've already discovered, 19 by 25. So 19 over 25 units is the width of one light box. So because a short wall is 10 twelfths of a unit and a small raised paver is one unit, we now know that the difference between these two is 2 twelfths of a unit. So we can use that to measure our jumps if we're using the difference between them in a build. So there you have it. The relative sizes of the parts in No Man's Sky, both in relationship to each other and in relation to the unit in the save editor, which is the height of the small raised paving. I hope you find this useful. I personally use it quite a lot. It depends on the kind of builder you are and what you're doing. And if you're using very precise measurements, some people use manual measurements all the time and just do everything by eye. And obviously some of the effects are amazing. I'm a mixture of the two. I like to position some things manually. I like to position some things in very, very precise units. And I use some of these tricks like light boxes, half light boxes, tiny micro adjustments to position those things precisely. In a subsequent video, I'll start to talk about micro adjustments and how we can use those and how we measure those. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.